Hey guys, uh, this is Talk Custom with TNT Cosplay Supply, and I'm here with Bryce from Frostbite Cosplay. Uh, today we're going to do a quick uh, EVA foam build of a, just a set of bracers or something like that. Yeah, yeah, just to kind of show a, a simple process to going in and designing easy parts. We'll probably do kind of a Batman-inspired kind of thing going cool. on that we can uh, we can put together in just a few minutes and uh, have a pretty nice prop at the end of the day. Cool, sounds good. Let's let's do it. Okay. okay, so to start off with, to make sure that the uh, pattern fits well, we're going to go ahead and do a, uh, a pattern of the arm form out of just some saran wrap and duct tape, and that way we know that we've got something that's actually going to fit the body. There's nothing worse than getting done with your prop and then realizing it don't go on. Right. Cool. So, all right, so we've got our saran wrap here. Um, we have this left over from when we shipped Arissa. <laughs> Their uh, normal saran wrap is fine, but if you can see your arm here. We'll go ahead and wrap it the other way here. Okay. And so we're just going to wrap this in saran wrap, and that way the duct tape isn't going to stick to it. I had some scissors, and then I left them over there. Okay. So we'll go ahead and just make that. And all we're doing with the saran wrap, it doesn't need to be pretty, um, is it's just making sure that the duct tape doesn't stick to his arm. Okay. So now what we're going to do... Do you prefer duct, duct tape, or can you use masking tape? Or? You, you can use duct tape, masking tape, uh, just whatever you've got. Um, my masking tape is just super old and stuck to itself, okay, cool. so I'll go this route. But so we'll go ahead and we're going to make our first wraps here on the uh, top and bottom. I don't want this to uh, cut off circulation. Okay, so we'll go ahead and... Here that might actually be a little bit high, but we can cut it down. Yeah. Um, And then we'll just take some strips of uh, this duct tape and kind of fill in the gaps here. Now I like to go uh, up and down the arm instead of around, just because that way it fits a little bit looser hmm. pattern. Um, you absolutely can go around. It just uh, it's a lot easier to get carried away that way. All right. Now if you want to just very carefully cut that off. Go ahead and pull that off then. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do Oops. is kind of flatten this out, clean up the edges just a little bit, because where we've got the saran wrap and stuff sticking out, it's going to be just all over the place. And so we'll grab our X-Acto knife here, and we're going to just, just kind of come in and trim it just a little bit. And I'm going to trace it onto this uh, uh, poster board here. Now, I don't know why this works. It's a weird prop maker deal that I heard about it. I thought it was a lie. I don't know. If we were to take this right now and put it down just like this, face up, and cut it out on foam just exactly like it is, mm -hmm. it wouldn't go back on your arm. It wouldn't fit. Huh. Um, it would be too small? It or? would be too small. And for some reason, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the pattern over here. And we're going to trace it. And so we'll go in and we'll just make a straight line. This is going to be the base of our armor. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut that out. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to trace this again. But what we're going to do here is this is going to be our bracer. That'll uh, oh, you're doing like that'll physically go on your arm, right? Okay, and now we're gonna design what we want to put on it. Okay, cool. Now, if you've got a piece here that you know we're gonna expand it out and it's too short, we can just this and add a little it. bit on there. Yep. yep. We'll go ahead and bring this forward over your hand a little bit. Okay, and then for a lot of the Batman stuff anymore, you've got these spikes that come off. So we've got our main place here, and then let's say this is, this was your left hand. Right. So what we'll do is we're not going to worry about these sides. This is going to be just kind of the top part here. Okay, I see. Go on. 
And so let's design, let's say we want it to start here in the corner and come down. And then we want to bring that over and off to the side here to a spike. And then we want this to do the same thing. So we'll do. So you're gonna do kind of layers of foam that overlap and make exactly. spikes. Sweet. Now let's go ahead and cut our, our patterns here. And you can make anything you want this way. Um, you know, if you wanted to go in and do you know, more more flowing armor or things like that, um, a lot of filigree stuff and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, that's where you, I would sit and draw it out and then just use. In fact, you guys have those new triangles now that are. I'm looking forward to picking up some. Oh of those yeah. Oh, I should have brought you some. That way, I don't have to freehand cut mine anymore. Yep. So we're going to take our main pattern here and uh, we'll line that up. We lined that up there. So it's it, this. And I'm going to draw this on here. I'm not worried about the spikes because they're going to come off the sides. Mm -hmm. But this way we'll know that the piece is lined up right. Okay. So we've got that drawn on. Now we'll cut this side off here. Back up. And then as we cut out each of our pieces here, we'll do that same thing. So this one comes into here and then shoots up. Okay. And this way when it comes time to assemble it all, I'm not just kind of, you know, it's not just kind of a crapshoot. I've actually got it marked out on here and I know everything's going to line up right. Then obviously as you're cutting smaller shapes we can just label each one so we know exactly which one's which and which way it goes. So like you know let's say here we want this to be part one. Yep. So, now we'll go ahead and start transferring that to some foam. Cool. Okay, so we've got some, some six milliliter foam here. We're gonna line that up. We're gonna use white so you guys can see a little bit more clearly of what Bryce is doing here. Yeah, and this is gonna kind of wrap a little bit will we'll heat form a bend into it. Mm -hmm. So the lines you're drawing on there are just to match up all the accents. Exactly. That you're yeah, because otherwise you just eyeball it. Right. And uh, it gets to be kind of hard to line it up right. Yeah. Then um, when you do the mirrored side for your other arm, if it's not perfectly symmetrical, it's going to look weird. Yeah. And if if I was doing two sides, like if I was going to be doing two gauntlets, then we'd be uh, after every step we'd be going through. You know. We'll, trace this one on and then we'd flip it and do it on the other right. one. Right, okay, I got gotcha. you. As, as we were going through each. To make sure everything is exactly the same. Exactly. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and just mark these like we were. This, you know, it's not necessarily necessary, okay, but... Right. Okay, so there we've got those pieces. And now we've got these that we're going to use for the shell on the back um, and the spikes. I'm going to go ahead and use six mil for them too, I think. And then we'll get and we'll use some thinner foam to do more details up on top of them okay. when we get to that okay. point. Cool. Now, 
a lot of people use the uh, extendable craft knives and stuff right. to do this. I find that I actually get a, I personally get a smoother cut using the X-Acto knife. Mm -hmm. um, it's not true for everybody. It's personal preference. Right. You know, whatever works for you. And because I want this to expand a little bit more from what it was, I'm going to cut the outside of the lines just on this one. The biggest thing is making sure that you have consistent blade angles, that you're getting that nice, right. you know, that nice 90 degree cut. Uh, okay. Okay, now these there are not as important, so we're gonna go just right on the line, mm -hmm. or uh, inside it, or whatever we need to do. Little corners like this, because I'm kind of anal about them. I stab, I stab straight in, and then I'll bring it out away from okay. the edge. That way you don't have that little. Bit yeah. that connects and, and then, then you gotta clean it up later. Do the other side, I'll do the same thing as we'll just stab it down. And we'll come back and do a nice cut. Cool. And that way we have, when we pull it out, we'll have a nice clean corner. Okay, now these pieces here that are going to line up on here, I don't want to just be, you know, flat up against each other. Right. And so we're going to go ahead and take and dremel just a little bit on these corners here. So all I'm going to do is just real quick, I'm just going to do... Just Cool. And that way, when we put them down on here, there's going to be oh a little bit of a yeah, gap. a little bit of a gap. That's that cool. To be All right. Kind of see what's going on. Put this back in. My then when you seal it and yeah. paint it, it's going to give it a cool little texture there. Right. <laughs> I love how functional your workspace is. <laughs> I try. I never would have thought of having. A roll of, is this wax paper? No, it's just like uh, exam paper. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And this is super thin down barge. Okay. Um, Meaning you put a bunch of water in there or what? Uh, it's got a bunch of barge thinner in it. Oh, okay. Um, and just that way it's going to smooth our go on here. So again, when we get to, uh, if I was joining a seam, I would use normal barge that I've got in there. Right. Uh, but with where I'm putting this piece on top of another piece, this way I don't have to worry about... Yeah, I'm seeing how quickly it's smoothing out there. Yeah. I never would have thought and, and that. And I've got the huge brush on there to... Okay, cool. Only one coat? One coat should be okay for this. Now, if we were joining them on a... Uh, a side seam here, right? I would do two. Okay, um, gotcha. Okay, so we'll go ahead and kind of bend that in a little bit. Okay, so we've got our heat gun, and we'll just kind of put a curve on everything here. Can you talk a bit about heat sealing while you're heat forming it? When we go through and heat seal it, we're basically melting that top layer of foam to get rid of those pores, uh, or to uh, make it so that stuff doesn't just soak down into those pores. So it kind of smooths the surface a bit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this will go ahead and just roll it really well. And see, we're starting to take shape. Yep. There. Now, let's say we wanted to 
you know, branch this off to where it looks like maybe it's a separate plate or something, or if we wanted to, you know, whatever, do some kind of a detail. Mm -hmm. So what we could do, we'll go in here and we'll put a line that goes around the outside. And now normally I would measure this off really carefully to make right. sure that it was all. Yep. I have something called a seam allowance ruler that allows you to do a perfect you know, half inch or three quarters or whatever. Oh yeah? Yep. And so we can, now we'll just go in and we'll cut partially through the foam here. Along oh, is this where you hit it with the heat gun and then it gives it a nice yep, little it'll texture? Open it up a little bit for us. So we can... Yep. That'll open it up, and we've got you know just a little bit more detail there. Yep. Pull this forward just a little bit, and let's say we wanted to add you know some bolts. We can come in and just close this down in a few places. There you go. So if you just use a sanding drum on a Dremel and press down, it adds these cool little rivet details. And then when you go back and paint it. It's going to look awesome. Now, honestly, a lot of times for a prop like this, because it's going to have a hard time holding its form, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and glue these edges together, and then we'll just cut, we'll uh, release it out later. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and that way it's going to be a little bit easier for us to form this. Yeah, because you know the seams are going to need to yeah, we're come gonna close to, to each yeah, other. Yeah, we're going to have to cut this and put Velcro in it, or what, you know, Velcro or magnets or whatever it is that we decide to do. Yep. To do the filigree, the way that I do it, is I'll come in here at a 45 degree angle. And this is where those new triangular dowels are gonna be awesome. Yep. Okay, so you're just cutting a bevel on the corner? Yep. We need a triangle piece here to be able to do the filigree. Okay. And now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with a heat gun just real quick while it runs away. Woo! And then while it's still kind of warm, we're just going to roll it up well, we can roll a little bit. Huh. And that's just going to soften the edges a bit. Wow, that's really cool. It doesn't it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does uh, it does pop it up just a little. Now to make a mess. We'll go ahead and join this seam together here. And again, I'm not super concerned about it being perfect because of the way that we're going to be uh, right. taking it back apart. I mean, I would never tolerate a seam like this on a, a normal build kit <laughs> for this. Okay, there we go. And just that way we've got, you know, kind of that remembered curve in there. So let's say we want to... So you're just going to draw on where you want it to go. Exactly. We're going to go ahead and we'll sketch on, you know, maybe we'll come down the middle with that part and then we'll do maybe just kind of a, a simple curve that comes down and around. Something like that. So oh, we'll, cool. we'll kind of just sketch on, you know, whatever it is that we're going to do. Yep. Um, and then we'll go ahead thin down contact cement. And there's another place where the thin down cement is really nice. Okay, cool. Because it doesn't... Uh, so it gives it something to stick to, but it's not going to it, yeah, it, clump it's, it up. Yeah, it's not going to... Exactly. It, it's not going to sit and clump everything together. It'll be a nice thin... And painting over dried barge isn't a big deal. No, well, see, and I, uh, on my foam builds, and I don't know, I know a lot of people don't, don't bother, but uh, after I've heat sealed it, I go over it with some filler primer huh. and just sand it a little bit okay. before I plasti dip it. Okay, cool. Um, so it so, smooths it out so that when exactly. you go to plasti dip it, it's twice as smooth. Well, yeah, and then just any little any little irregularities or something okay. that are left in there, you know, any different textures from maybe I sanded it a little funny or something, it gets rid of all of that. Huh. Um, I mean, once you sand it, it gets it gets super smooth. And so it's kind of a good it's kind of a good multi-use tool. Uh, for, cool. I use it on a lot. <laughs> And then what we'll do is we'll just take some scissors and we're going to cut an angle on here okay. where we're going to start. And that way it doesn't have a sharp curve or whatever. It's got kind of a nice natural feel. And we'll just 
use this to just follow around where we've got that line drawn. Hmm. And like I said, it's going to be awesome with those new, the new triangular dowels because I won't have to cut these little noodles. <laughs> Okay. And the same thing, we're going to go in and just use an angle here. Okay. And so you can do that, you know, if you're doing like a Sylvanus armor or something like right. that, that's a popular one. Yep. That's a good way to get those nice raised details without having to sit and fight with stuff all over the place. And that was fast. Yeah, it doesn't take much time. It looks great. Um, Air dry it, and then we'll just go over this with some. Uh, we'll just get it with some metallics to kind of make it look metal. Cool. And that way we've got a uh, a simple finished deal. So we're going to start off with just some uh, gunmetal metallic here. We're going to get most of the paint out of that, and just start kind of building our. Uh, metallic depth on here and it takes a while for mm. this to really show up because we ruined everything <laughs> yeah just brush it out it'll it'll yeah. go somewhere so is this going to give it like a shine to it yeah what we'll do is oh, i'm already is, starting to see that this is going to make it look like a real metal instead of just a, a piece of silver and so i can put just a little bit of this down here um and now we want this to be kind of erratic, but even things that are, that are silver, they've got you know some hints of other colors in them. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build that up on this, or with just this little bit of gold on there. And then we'll go back with more of the gun metal. And we're just gonna kinda mm. just slowly build our, our metallic color by basically just adding a bunch of tiny scratches at a time until it gets to, to what we're after. Now, the chrome here, you have to be super careful with because it is crazy high pigmented. Okay. But we'll, you know, again, we'll go in and now, now is where you're gonna start really oh, seeing cool. the, the silver metallic coming out. As we just kinda... Wow. Yeah, that happened real fast. Yeah, yeah, it, get, it starts to show up. And there we go. More or less kind of a, a steel looking prop. This looks terrific so far. Okay, so to finish this off, uh, we're gonna just attach some elastic that'll let it be slipped on. And so we've taken some EVA 70 and uh, just sewn through it onto some pieces of elastic that's gonna let us uh, make this wearable. Oh, cool, so you're just using the high density stuff. Yeah. Which easily sticks to foam, and then sewn it right onto elastic. Yep, and then we'll just use a little bit of this super glue here. Now, if this was a part that was gonna show, or, you know, a, a uh, uh, like a competition build piece or something like that, mm -hmm. I would uh, I'd put a lot more care into the closure, make sure that it wasn't visible at all, that everything was hidden really well. But for for the sake of a demo, this works. Okay, so that should do it. Cool. So this is a ready prop now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. All right, cool. Our uh, our our foam bracer build is done, and that was really quick and pretty damn easy. And this thing looks amazing. So. Um, Bryce, what do you think? I worked out pretty well. Yeah. So then it's, it's a quick, easy process. I mean, anybody can go through and build like that, you know, showing off the different filigrees and stuff. Um, the biggest tip that I've got is like we did on there, make sure you're using your templates to mark out where stuff goes so that you can make sure that it stays consistent. Mm. But other than that, I mean, it, once you get the hang of it, you can build anything you want. For something so simple to, to turn out looking so good is really impressive. 
Yeah, and I mean, um, if, if we wanted to take, you know, a feather brush and just hit a little bit of chrome on the edges of that to kind of highlight them yep. and stuff like that, bring it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, paint the rivets and yeah. kind of darken some of the cracks and whatever, but for a quick build, this looks awesome. Hopefully people learned something. Cool, sweet. All right, thanks a lot, man. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Hey, thanks for coming by. Yeah.